Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I want to show you a straggler Utah feature that I had on my list to show, just hadn't had time to sit down and record it. Well, here I am, custom notifications in the next experience. That's what I want to show you. Here's the feature up behind me, create custom notifications in the next experience. We're going to do this under system notification for provider notifications, but we're not going to use email. So we're going to use the product itself, ServiceNow, to notify users of some Something happening in the platform and then they can click on those notifications and do something but let's take a look at what that means before we actually jump into it so I'm on a list view of all the notifications in the system I'm gonna drag over this window here which is uh, another browser uh, Safari to be exact that has able tutor logged in and I'm just gonna have able tutor create an incident I want you to see what happens behind me so we're gonna go ahead and put a description here demo for YouTube and we'll call this number one and then we will set the assign to to myself Justin Meadows and we'll put just test in the description and I'm gonna hit save now what I want you to pay attention to before I hit save is what happens here in the upper right hand corner of my other window for the next experience I'm gonna hit save and I've got notifications enabled in that experience let's go ahead and move able tutor over to a different screen and you can see there I got a pop-up or toast notification saying the incident blah 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 has been assigned to me it sits there for a minute and then goes away um, now it comes back I think it's because my annotation thing was up there and then I can click on that or I can go here to notifications and click on that and it takes me to the actual incident right and you can tailor what's in those messages so let's actually look at what that looks like in the configuration we'll go to my history here and two notifications and I think I called this one critical incident let's see if I did uh, new critical incident there we go so this is what I've configured um, under provider system notification provider notifications and I'll walk you through a couple of the details number one we did a record change on an event if you want to use the event processing system you can um, I thought I had unchecked and updated but you can choose whether that record change is an insert or an update um, I prefer it just to be an insert I won't want to be notified every time someone saves something on that particular incident and then you filter on the table so we said hey is this going to be incident and it's assigned to Justin Meadows and I'm going to go ahead and add in another fil filter here for priority is critical so Here's one of the gotchas that I realized uh, one thing when setting this up is who you've got this configured for. So I have this routing directly to Justin Meadows. Now notice you can pick any user. You can pick recipients listed in fields in the record that triggered the uh, record chain. So if I wanted to choose the assign to, uh, which is right under the ASSIG, there we go, assign to, um, I could have done that instead, right? Instead of making a Justin rule, it could have just been whoever gets assigned to it. So you can be creative there, and then you can say, include the person who notif whose action triggered the notification. Now, while that's true, what I saw in practice is if I try to do this as myself, I don't receive the notifications. Let's just check that out just to see here. I'm gonna go to incident.list, and you saw how fast it worked for Abel when he created an incident. It, was pretty quick so we'll just uh, we'll do another incident here uh, demo number two for YouTube and we'll just put test in there and we'll assign it to Justin Meadows and if it works like it's been working we are not going to see the notification not the toast notification or my bell light up at the very, the very top notice how I don't get anything so it's it's like if you're testing this or you're going to do this make sure you do the two browser thing and pick somebody else in order to configure that but let's head back to that configuration there we may get a notification here eventually I did see them come through at some point but there's one more part of the configuration I want you to see which makes it pretty powerful when you're configuring these so I showed you when to send it I showed you who will receive it but let's look at the actual content of that and that's here for new critical incident assigned to Justin that's just the name I gave it you could start from scratch let me move my head using this new provider content and I'll show you what the um the interrupter actually shows so I could choose a virtual agent content virtual agent content messaging workspace or next experience I chose for this one the next experience so you could have that little pop-up like you saw in the brief demo at the beginning so that's what I chose let's go ahead and open that one up so we can see what it looks like and how I configured that again I just named this new critical incident assigned to Justin it automatically populate populates the notification pulls in the table and it populates the route and of course you can set it to active now you get to control the message heading let's see if it's still up there right so new critical incident exclamation point that's the message heading and then you can control the message and that's showing here incident colon demo for YouTube number one and I just did that by number colon face short description and then you can grab any of these fields 
that are on the record to do stuff. And you can dot walk your way over to different things. Like I can go to the open buy and I go to the cost center, for example, stuff like that. So you can get pretty creative in your notifications and it works in workspaces. So let's end there. I'm gonna to go to a workspace and let's choose service operations workspace. And we'll end this demo showing you one more time how this actually works when somebody else puts in the record criteria that meets that criteria. So I'm gonna be able tutor here. We're gonna take able tutor into the service operations workspace because that's another place where we create incidents, not just necessarily from the incident list. So let's create a new incident. We're gonna assign it to Justin and we're gonna make sure the priority is set to critical and see what happens there. Here's the form pulling up. I'll just go ahead and grab the short description and we'll say demo number three for YouTube. You got three and one uh, video uh, caller. If we could make it anybody, let's choose Aaron Mazden. We'll set the impact to high, the urgency to high, which makes our priority critical there. And then we need to set the assign to to Justin Meadows, right there, J U S T I N Meadows. And we'll go ahead and save. And again, what we're expecting is the pop up notification here in the background for my other account or my actual account that's logged in. I don't know where the assignment went to. All right, so I'm going to click save and that should be pretty instantaneous. There it is. You can see it in the background, just instantly pops up. Notice it didn't do that when I did it as myself. And then if I click the notification, I can see there's demo number three for YouTube. And again, when you click these, it takes you to the incident depending on where you are. I was sitting in the workspace, so it opens up the incident in the workspace. The time before I wasn't in the workspace, so it opened up the incident in the list view. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in customizing in platform in product notifications in ServiceNow. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.